Hello, Miss Simmons here. Normally I'd be speaking to you from the hall, like I do every year, about the next stages of your daughter's learning and what you can do to support her. But today we're going to do it like this. The first thing I'm going to talk about is what they can do right now in the way they approach their learning in year nine to give them the right learning skills to take themselves forward into key stage four next year. It's really important to get into good learning habits, making sure they get into routines about their homework, definitely getting it done when it's set rather than leaving it till when it's due, organising their Google Classroom folders effectively and making sure they download the app if they can to their phones, planning ahead, using the curriculum maps for each subject on the school website. The link is here on this document, which is below my video. Preparing their own questions for class. So if they know what the next lesson is going to be about, take the time to prepare questions so they can ask for clarification of things they're not sure about when they're in the lesson the next time they're with that teacher. Doing their own research and wider reading around the topics that they're covering or the subjects that they're delving into in that particular subject. Being a really good learning friend or what we call study buddies. They've got well established friendships by this point in year nine and it's really important that they become the right kind of friends for one another friends that champion each other's futures and that support each other to be study buddies. They can use online tools to do that together, or they can do it obviously face-to-face -face within the groups of six. And then using the other effective online tools that are given to them. They have a lot of things on Google, but each department also has other tools which they use to set homework. And there are many other revision tools on, available to them as well online. This quote from Professor Dylan William, is an important one that actually having a really good memory and a really good long term memory is a key part of school. It's not just about learning individual subjects. It's about learning how to remember. And I will touch on that now. But as they go through into year nine and year 10, we spend time with them looking at particular memory techniques because at the end of the two years of year 10 and year 11, they are expected to be able to remember an awful lot of content. So you've seen this from me before, and I make no apologies for the fact I'm showing it to you again, but this is the learning pyramid. So if they just listen to a lecture, they're only likely to take in about 5% of that information and retain it. Reading it alongside listening will give them another 10%. Looking at audio visual images that link to the reading and to what they're listening to will take it up to about 20%. So what I'm doing with you right now is a combination of those three things. Demonstrating, so taking the time to demonstrate something, to try something out, to have a go, helps them remember. Discussing it, so going back to what I said about having good study buddy groups is really important. Discussing things with one another will help them remember because the way your brain works to formulate those debates and discussions helps push things from short term to long term memory. Practicing by doing as many times as possible, something which they are worried about uh, whether they're getting right, practice, practice makes perfect. And then also teaching others. And I always talk about my good old dad, my late father, that he would ask me to teach him something I'd learned at school. And by the act of teaching it to him, I would remember it more because my brain had to order things in a sensible, structured way so that it was memorable. And I think, you know, having the opportunity to do that either with yourselves or with their siblings or with their friends in their study group, really, really pays dividends. Another thing that's true is actually that you learn things more sometimes if you find them hard. Finding something difficult and then using the uh, resilience, and the tenacity to get past what's hard and to break it down into, OK, what aspect of this can I do? What can I do to find out more? How can I understand this in more depth? Getting past that will help them remember and help them learn it. So trying to encourage them not to be their own barriers. I can't do this. Well, you can't do it at the moment. What do you need to ask? What more information do you need in order to help you do the particular task? But being stressed about it does block the learning. So it's important that they try and avoid and you help them try and avoid feeling stressed about the things they feel difficult, think are difficult. Something that's difficult is a challenge to be overcome. It's not a wall to block them going further. 
best ways to improve long-term memory, there's lots of theories about this, and I will certainly do some work with the students in, the, in when they get to year 10 about this. But one of the best ways to improve long-term memory is what's called distributed practice, which means doing a little bit often over a prolonged period of time. So if they have a topic that they know, they're studying at the moment in year nine, that they know at the end of year nine is likely to be in their exams, and they can ask their teachers if they're not sure, then actually just leaving it and waiting till the revision just before the exams is not the right way to do it. What would be much better would be to make themselves some uh, revision materials, whether that's mind maps or whether that's uh, making quizzes for themselves or whether that's making um, revision cards. Those kind of things could happen now and you keep going back to them. You distribute the practice over time and you keep going back to it and it helps push it from short term to long term memory. There's actually a really specific technique called the Lightner Box method. And there's lots of demos on that on YouTube if you just look up Lightner Box method. But on the um, version of this that you, where you can click on this below my video, you'll be able to click on that YouTube link and it will take you straight to one of them. It is then time for them to start thinking ahead about making their key stage four choices in February. We don't start the um, year 10 and 11 courses until year 10 uh, in most subjects, although in English, math, science and in RE, some of the content does start in year nine. But they do need to start thinking about what choices they're going to make when we come to do that in February. And my next presentation, I have three on here today for you, is all about that. There are key dates for that process, and this builds on some of the dates that Miss Hodge has put in her presentation. So on Thursday, the 4th of February in the morning, um, I will do an assembly for, or during the school day, I will do an assembly for them on how to complete their progression routes forms on Google and the choices that they've got. Um, ideally, that will be with them all in the hall with me, but if due to social distancing we're not allowed to do that, then it will be done during daily message time uh, in the afternoon and they'll all be able to uh, watch me do a presentation. In the evening, that day, hopefully, we're back in the world where you're able to come in uh, and each of the subjects present a subject fair on their subjects and you're able to go around with your children to find out about those subjects. But if it has to be a virtual event, we do now have a format for stuff like that. So if you've had a chance to have a click on the school website and have a look at our virtual open evening, you'll see we've got good structures for doing that now. And we will put together a virtual event where you can click on each subject, hear more about it, see videos about it, uh, and also uh, have all the materials about the courses that are available. Um, but again, Year 9 Parents Evening is then a couple of weeks later, um, hopefully face to face. If not, it will be a virtual event done either over the phone or over Google Meets, and we will come, we will let you know about that nearer the time. And then they have usually have a careers networking day in the week beginning the 1st of March, where we get people from careers across a massive range of different job roles and um, experiences to come and talk to the students and the students get an opportunity to talk to them sort of speed dating style and speak to about 10, 15 different people. Um, at the moment, there's no way we'll be able to do that. So if we can't do that uh, in person, again, that will happen online. Um, and then they have a deadline to hand their forms in on Friday, the 5th of March. So it's about a month from when they get all the information about what their choices are and how to make them to when they then hand the, hand the forms in on Google. And I will be going over this all in more detail with you in my next presentation. Thank you for listening.